while everybody's preference would be to give Damon Hunt more of an extended opportunity, let's play this out as if the Wild had to acquire a defenseman. What are the options we discuss on today's episode of Locked on Wild? You're locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, this is Brandon Duham, and this is Locked On Wild. What up? What's happening, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you, as always, for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms so you don't miss out on any new episodes. And join the conversation on YouTube, one of the largest growing comment sections in the Lockdown NHL channel. Today's episode of Lockdown Wild is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. On today's episode of Locked and Wild, we play Defenseman 101. If the Wild had to acquire a defenseman, who are some of the options out there for them to be able to get, considering what they currently have available? We'll run through all of the in-house and some potential interesting swings that the Wilds could look at uh, here to uh, fill a spot in the decor. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider and credentialed Wild media member, bringing you a uh, Wednesday night episode with the PWHL Minnesota just about to uh, get underway. So, uh, you know, I'll be tuning into that here uh, with a rare free Wednesday night. Uh, so uh, going to hop on there. We'll uh, we'll have some thoughts for you in a special uh, short episode uh, for tomorrow uh, where we'll talk about the PWHL a little bit. So uh, stay tuned for that coming up in the morning. Uh, just reacting to uh, what we saw from the PWHL here this evening. I know we've talked about this extensively over the uh, last few days, ever since the news was levied by Michael Russo that the Minnesota Wild are looking into potential options to bring in a defenseman with Jared Spurgeon out for the season. With Jared Spurgeon being out for the season, the Wild have some cap space that they are able to use to bring somebody in for the rest of the season. And so it's mostly looking at potential unrestricted free agent options, guys that will be coming off the books at the end of the season. So commitments that you don't have to worry about beyond this year, somebody that can come in and can uh, assist the top four without costing you a whole lot. Well, I'm here to tell you that that's a, uh, that's quite the way to try to pin this because acquiring somebody who can do that, uh, which is to say play in the top four of a uh, a defense group and can give you everything that a top four defenseman should while also acquiring them for little to nothing. That's a tricky proposition. So what we're going to do today, even though I think a lot of us would just prefer to see the likes of Damon Hunt um, continue to get opportunities and to not see Dakota Mermis have his opportunity taken away from him. And I still am in that camp myself, but we're just going to operate under the assumption that the wild have to, so that we can talk about the options that are out there and some potential names that would fit the bill that uh, would be worth looking into. Now with the fact that Jared Spurgeon's on long-term injured reserve for the rest of the season, Cap Friendly is currently showing the Wilds with a uh, cap room of $3.9 million. So they got about $3.9 million to utilize for the rest of this season, but they currently have a full roster. 
a full 23. And so obviously there are some ways around that. If Marc-Andre Fleury is able to come back from his uh, current injury, you wouldn't have to have Jesper Volstead up here. So that would take care of that roster spot. Uh, the Wild have the likes of Jake Lucchini up as well. So there are ways to maneuver this if the Wild do look to get somebody. But here's the other part of the scenario right now. You currently have seven defensemen on the NHL roster. Jonas Brodeen, Jake Middleton, Alex Goligoski, John Merrill, Brock Faber, Zach Bogosian, and Dakota Mermis. So if you're acquiring an eighth, are you going to do something about the $1.2 million man who is currently occupying the press box? Are you going to move John Merrill off the roster? Or are you just going to hang on to him for the rest of the season? I mean, I, I don't see a way honestly, in which John Merrill comes back next season with this, with him being a healthy scratch down the stretch, which is something we've been clamoring for, for years, literal years. He's not going to want to come back to that. Is he, unless for some reason he would vault back into the starting lineup next year, which I would rather not see. So maybe you take that as an opportunity too to move him off the roster or to just straight up wave him and uh, not have to deal with that situation. But it feels like as you look at the players that are currently on, Brodeen not going anywhere, Middleton not going anywhere, Alex Goligoski probably going to the press box uh, because, again, with his 35-plus uh, contract and with Bill Guerin assuring him, um, and actually with Goligoski even, not waiving his uh, no move clause over the last couple of instances in which the team has had opportunities to trade him. He's probably going to be the one sitting in the press box. Brock Faber not going anywhere. Zach Bogosian has been up and down, but for the most part, he has had more up than down. So I don't think you're going to, if anything, you're just going to pull him down to a third pairing defenseman. And again, Dakota Mermis has played well enough that I don't think you take him out of the equation either. He deserves the opportunity to continue to play. And so if you are going to add somebody to the mix, it feels weird to just have two guys then that you're going to just have sit in the press box unless you suffer like a rash of injuries. So maybe it would be in that situation where John Merrill gets shown the door. That's probably wishful thinking. But uh, just in kind of starting this exercise out, uh, that is kind of something that I'm looking at uh, for this situation. Now, the other thing, what would you be looking for in a defenseman? Well, to be honest, considering the diminutive stature of defensemen not named Jake Middleton or Zach Bogosian, you're probably looking for somebody that at least has a little bit of beef to them. This is what we've been told about, which it it's funny because that has been one of the circulated reasons as to why John Merrill has played as much as he has is because he's tall, because he can play physical. Like, guys, if, I don't see any of that on the ice. Now, it just seems to fit the profile what we know about Bill Guerin and how he operates this team is that bigger and stronger is better than smaller and faster. So if you're looking for a defenseman to add to this mix, it's probably going to be somebody who is a little on the bigger side to allow. And look, it's not like it's something that they don't need like just watch the wilds on nights which they're in when they're which they're not playing well they get moved off the puck pretty easily so it's not like it's it's not like it's something that is not a need it just feels like that's the only thing that's ever prioritized by this team and so i would imagine that that is a characteristic 
that is being looked at by the wild as well is a defenseman that can throw their body around a little bit, but can also give you more than simply that. So those are kind of the uh, parameters that I'm keeping an eye on for this search. A couple of other things to keep in mind. If you are getting somebody who is only signed to a contract for the rest of the season, then it is easy to just cut bait at the end of the year and to have that be that. If you get anybody beyond that, you got to kind of try to factor them in with similar amounts of money to spend this offseason than you had last year. Um, so that is another thing that uh, that needs to be taken into consideration as well. So let's peruse through the list, considering teams that are out of the playoff chase at this point. There are a few. And uh, we'll go through some names that you could potentially see as options for the Minnesota Wilds to try to acquire if they are indeed going to go grab a defenseman. We'll continue that chat with some potential names to keep an eye on after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Indeed. We're driven by the search for butter. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search. Match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. One of the things as an employee looking for a uh, new career, um, Indeed makes it super easy for me to find things that I may have missed when I'm searching through for potential opportunities. It will tell me, hey, are you proficient in this skill? Are you proficient in this skill? You might need these types of skills if you are applying for this particular job. So Indeed helps to connect some of those dots when you are looking for different jobs out there. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on Locked on Wild. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Welcome back to today's episode of Lockdown Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. Tomorrow, we will talk with Nick Morgan of Lockdown Predators to give you a preview of a big tilt against the Nashville Predators coming up tomorrow night. So make sure to tune in for that uh, coming for you mid-morning as we will uh, take a look at how Nashville continues to find themselves in a playoff position despite uh, an uneven season for UC Soros between the pipes. So we'll talk about that. Excited to uh, have a chance to talk with Nick uh, for tomorrow's episode. And then, of course, we got you covered after the game as well as we do basically the entirety of the year. So let's take a look at some options. And we're going to start by looking at impending UFAs, players who are going to be off the books after this season. And the teams that we're going to start with are the teams that are out of the playoff picture as of right now, which there are three really in the uh, Western Conference, Anaheim, Chicago, and San Jose. There are four, for the most part, in the Eastern Conference. Montreal, Buffalo, Ottawa, and Columbus. And so let's just start with the, we'll start with the San Jose Sharks. And if you look at the players that they currently have on defense, they got five players on injured reserve. Yikes. Um, defensively, Mark Edward Vlasic, that's a hard pass. That dude is making $7 million a year, and he is literally statistically. And I, I even looked because I couldn't believe it myself. He is even worse statistically somehow than John Merrill. 
and he's making $7 million. He's got a modified no trade clause, hard pass on that one. Mario Ferraro is an interesting name that I've had thrown my way on Twitter um, over the, uh, the last few weeks. He is 25. He is five foot 11, 185 pounds. And you look at what he brings, not a ton in the way of points, but um, a kind of up and coming, trying to maybe catch lightning in a bottle the same way the wild did with Jake Middleton. Uh, I will, I'll focus more on him. I think in a future video, but just going through the list of names for the San Jose Sharks, that uh, that would be options. And honestly, for San Jose, they don't have a ton. Uh, Jan Ruda is signed for two seasons, this year and next year, at $2.75 million per season. That's probably a no. Uh, Kyle Burrows is signed for $1.1 million for the next three seasons. It That's still probably a, uh, that's still probably a no. Um, Again, just just looking, he's a, he brings a ton in the way of penalty minutes um, to the table, but uh, would have to dive further deeper into his stats to uh, to take a look at that. And beyond those names, you've got the likes of uh, Henry Henry Thrun on his entry level contract. Some guy named Kalen Addison, um, who's on uh, the final year of his deal. He's a restricted free agent after this season. Uh, of course, I know who Kalen Addison is. So my basic point here is that San Jose really doesn't have a ton unless you are bringing somebody in for a multi-year uh, experience. So we'll move on from San Jose because I just I don't necessarily know that there is a uh, there's a fit there for the Chicago Blackhawks. They are basically young with the exception of Jacob Megna or Jake uh, Jared Tenorti. Those are the only two players they have on defense, not named Seth Jones that are over 22 years old. Um, so there probably isn't a fit with Chicago either, unless you would go get like Tenorti or Megna. They're making Tenorti's making $1.25 million and Megna is making uh, 762000 Tenorti is 6'6", 225. So that's, that's more probably along the lines of what is being looked at um, for Bill Guerin. So Tenorti might be a name to keep an eye on for the uh, the rest of this season. But beyond that, I don't really see a fit with Chicago just because they're so young on their blue line. Anaheim Ducks, another team that is not in the postseason picture. And we talked about this a little bit on the uh, one of our last postcasts, but I'll just run through the names again. Cam Fowler making $6.5 million. He's 32. He's signed for the next three seasons. That's probably not a fit. Radko Gudis, 33 years old. He's making $4 million per season, but he's also signed for three years. There's a lot of moving that would need to happen in order to, uh, to get that to happen. You'd have to have Anaheim take on some salary. The one name that I think is interesting here, because the rest are restricted free agents, is Ilya Lyabushkin. I think is somebody else who could be kind of in that profile of what the wild are looking for. Uh, statistically doesn't jump off the page a ton, but uh, you look at his profile, he's six, two, 200 pounds, two Oh one to be exact. And so veteran defenseman, that could be another name that the wilds uh, at least monitor. Um, with the Anaheim Ducks, and Bill Guerin has worked with Anaheim before. So that's another possibility if we're looking strictly at unrestricted free agents that uh, will be coming down the pipe here um, that will be off the books after this season is done. So from those teams, those are kind of the big ones. Let's go to the Ottawa Senators. And for the Senators... They've got a lot of different things going on 
with their current decor. Thomas Shabbat, $8 million per season until 2027-2028. That's a no. Jacob Chikrin, a player who has been linked to the Minnesota Wild over the last couple of seasons, 25 years old, and there are rumors that he is souring on what Ottawa has been selling. Now that would uh, that'll probably be one that is also looked at in a future episode because there are more moving parts that would need to be required with that. But here's a name to consider as well. 33 years old, signed for $1.1 million for the next two seasons. Travis uh, Hamannick, who is 6'2", 205. Again, the stats don't jump off the page, but in 40 games with the Senators this year, he is a uh, minus three, 38 penalty minutes, just five points. He had 21 points last year uh, in 75 games. So. And again, another veteran guy, $1.1 million isn't going to kill you over these next two seasons. And further point, reason that I've talked about getting somebody who maybe has more than one year of control is because you're going to need to fill some spots next year. And I'm sorry, I just, I do not feel comfortable just going into next year saying, yeah, Jared Spurgeon's going to be back at 100%. I just, I I cannot in good conscience operate as if that is a factual statement. It just isn't. So you're going to have to fill probably at least his spot. Bogosian, likely not back. Goligoski, not back. Again, I don't see a situation in which John Merrill's on this roster next year because of the fact that he is not playing down the stretch. That's not going to be something that he wants. So you're going to have to fill some spots, and even if you have Damon Hunt up here to fill one of them, you still have others that will need to be plugged. So getting somebody that's on a $1.1 million contract is, I think, a little bit appealing to be able to add to that mix. And so beyond that, that's really it. Uh, Eric Brandstrom is making $2 million. He's a restricted free agent at the end of this season. So you'd have his rights, but you then also would have to try to negotiate um, for a 24-year-old, kind of what his next contract looks like. So that's probably a pass there, too. That's probably about all the, um, the senators have to offer. Columbus is complicated as well. Ivan Provorov, $4.725 million each of the next two seasons. I don't see a situation in which that works out. Eric Goodbranson, who I had mentioned um, last Monday, as a definite, like he fits the profile perfectly of what you would think Bill Guerin would be looking for at 6'5", 217. But here's the problem with him, is he's making $4 million a season until the end of the 2025-2026 season. And so you'd either have to have Columbus eat half of that, or you'd have to move some other salary defensively to make it work. So that's probably not as likely. Columbus doesn't really have anybody that fits that impending UFA profile. So let's move on to the next team, the Buffalo Sabres. They don't have anybody that fits that profile either. Other than... Eric Johnson, who is currently on injured reserve. He's making $3.25 million and is a unrestricted free agent at the end of the season. He's also 35. I'm not as I'm not as high on uh, on that one. But some of the names, I mean, Rasmus Dahlin just signed an extension. He's going to make $11 million next year, so that's that's probably not going to happen. Matthias Samuelson making 4.285 every year through the end of 2029-2030. Uh, Crazy number to throw out there. Connor Clifton, 3.33333 million until 2025-2026. So Buffalo probably doesn't have what you're looking for either. The final team that we'll look at before we talk about some potential other names um, from a team that is not 
currently out of the playoff picture. The Montreal Canadiens, and again, Montreal, David Savard is making $3.5 million for the next two seasons, so that's probably a no. Jordan Harris is 23. He'll be a restricted free agent before the 2025-2026 season and is also arbitration eligible. So I don't see Montreal moving on from him. So that's probably, those are probably some of the most at least fit the profile type names for the Minnesota Wilds to keep an eye on um, in the UFA department. Now, there are a couple of other names from playoff teams that would be interesting as well. And so we'll throw out a couple of other potential targets as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Sleeper. We have passed the midway point of the NHL season. The Minnesota Wild on the outside looking in, hoping to change their playoff fortunes by uh, playing strong here the rest of the season. And regardless of if they are able to climb back in or not, you can still win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked on NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether wild players such as Kirill Kaprizov, Jewel Eriksson, Matt Boldy, Marco Rossi, or Brock Faber will record more or less than their Sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. Use promo code LOCKEDONNHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code LOCKEDONNHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Uh, Appreciate those that have emailed already to line up uh, potential guest spots for future episodes of Locked on Wild. Uh, we will get those ironed out and get you on the show here um, within uh, hopefully the next week or so. Uh, if you'd like to be part of a future episode of Locked on Wild, make sure to send an email to LockedOnWild at gmail.com and we will get you on the microphone for a future episode of the wild. Uh, if you have a particular area that you would like to discuss as well, feel free to drop that too. I've had uh, a few people so far who have thrown out particular areas of interest. Um, some PWHL also had the, uh, Iowa heartlanders and the Iowa wild. So I, I love if you have an area that you really are passionate about with this team, with this organization that you want to talk about, I am all for it. So uh, just make sure to drop us a line at LockedOnWild at gmail.com and uh, we will get things ironed out and get you on the show. So we went through names that could be found on teams that are currently outside of the uh, playoff picture. But there are a couple of intriguing names on one team in particular that is currently in the postseason picture. The Los Angeles Kings, who are in what many would call absolute free fall at uh, this point in their season, I still think that they are going to be plenty good enough to get into the playoffs, but you never know. Stranger things have happened. Teams have gotten off to incredibly hot starts and just have not been able to get themselves back on track. One uh, team in particular that I think perfectly encapsulated that last year was the Winnipeg Jets. Winnipeg Jets did get into the playoffs on the final day of the season. But boy, they uh, they had some struggles down the stretch. And so if we look at the Los Angeles Kings, they do have a couple of names that are intriguing. Obviously, you're not going to you're not going to be able to make a, a Drew Doughty type trade work because there just is so much money involved. Vladislav Gavrikov is making $5.875 million. Michael Anderson, $4.125. So those guys are probably out. But 
as was pointed out, I think Mike was the one who threw this name out um, after yesterday's episode. What about a guy like Matt Roy? 6'1", 200 pounds, has been around the league quite a bit. He's played with the Los Angeles Kings since 2018-2019. He has 13 points so far in 43 games. He had nine goals last year for the Kings, including a playoff goal. And uh, all told, he is uh, currently plus seven on the season, just 16 penalty minutes in 43 games. And so somebody who has a little skill offensively, he is in the final year of his deal. He's making $3.15 million as of right now, which would be a number that you could fit in the long-term injured reserve um, space that you have available. You could fit that in and you'd still have about 800 K to work with. And that's assuming that you did nothing else with this roster. So that would be workable. And I would feel infinitely better about having a guy like that on the roster to fill in, in the top four, to fill in, even to even when you get kind of get yourself put back to where you want to be even having him maybe be a third pairing guy but honestly i think let's just say you did get matt roy brodeen and faber that's your top pairing i would be intrigued by a middleton roy second pairing and then mermis and Bogosian as your third pairing, or Roy and Bogosian. Um, honestly, I, I think Matt Roy would be a player that the the Wild should think about if they are going to uh, to do this, if they are going to try to acquire somebody to give them some help defensively. Again, though, Los Angeles Kings are currently still in the wild card picture, so they're in the postseason unless they would fall out of it unless you pull off a good old hockey trade and you send for instance Brandon Duhame to Los Angeles to uh, to help them out to bolster their them offensively while you then take a defenseman back I mean maybe maybe that would be a route that they would be looking for but I just in order to make that happen, there it feels like there would be a lot that would have to go well for both teams. Um, and by well, I mean for the Wilds to get back in and for the Kings to continue to fall out of the picture. Now I'm going to I'm going to uh, throw out my mystery name. That was uh, was sent to me by uh, Dan Bradley of the Pod Snipe Selly podcast, friend of the show, avid listener. He had a name that is intriguing to me, and I'm just going to read what Dan says about this player as a potential option for the Wild, and I'll let you, I'll let you decide as to if this is a name worth pursuing. So Dan messaged me and said. I've got a guy who may be worth considering as a D-man trade target for the Wild. Andreas England from the Los Angeles Kings. He was a second-round pick in 2018, has a $1 million cap hit each of the next two years. So you could get an extra year in case Carson Lambos or Ryan O'Rourke need a bit more time, and we need an extra body for next year. For the Kings, it gives them a roster spot to more consistently play Brant Clark, their top defenseman prospect. Despite averaging 13 minutes a night, England leads the Kings, leads the Kings in hits and is fifth in blocks per 60 minutes. On ice, his 54.45 Corsi 4 percentage at 5-on-5 five five is higher than any wild defenseman and only trails Nick Patan for season total. England has a high on ice expected goals for of 25.81. He has a higher expected goals for than Anze Kopitar. 
He's bounced around in the NHL a bit with stints in Ottawa, Colorado, and Chicago before LA, but he seems to finally be finding his footing a bit. Add in that he's a Swede, and Minnesota becomes a natural fit. The Wild obviously have a good rapport with the Los Angeles Kings from the Fiala trade and could likely get England for one of their fifth-round picks this year or perhaps a fourth from Toronto next year. The Kings are currently down second, third, and fifth-round picks this year, so I think that could play in our favor. Uh, I'm all about that because for you to be playing 13 minutes a night and still be leading the Los Angeles Kings in the category of hits. Now you look at what else he has done so far this year. He's got one goal, six assists, seven total points on the season. But again, you look at the profile, 6'3", 189. And again, for the reason that I lay out in not being able to be comfortable considering the surgeries that Jared Spurgeon is going through this off the, this like now I'm not comfortable just going into next year saying, yes, Spurgeon is a hundred percent back. He's a hundred percent ready. So what this would do is it would allow you somebody who can help you this year. And it would allow you somebody who is not Alex Goligoski or John Merrill to assist in a variety of ways for next season. With still being able to have, for instance, Damon Hunt on defense next year. And the opportunities for Carson Lambos and or Ryan O'Rourke are still going to be there. Because I think what you can start to do with Lambos maybe next year is to have him get called up if injuries are a problem on defense. Give him an opportunity to get his feet a little wet at the NHL level and you'll get a good oppor- you'll get a good opportunity to see if he is able to contribute. Yes, he looked really good in the preseason for the Wilds um before this season. But Full NHL season is an entirely different animal. And I, I, do, I do not want to see this team go into next season and just say, yeah, we're just going to go with John Merrill again. I, I can't for my sanity have that be an option. So that's a name, I think, based on the reasoning that's laid out there, that would make a ton of sense. But there are obviously a ton of others, as we've talked about today, and I know I've I've had people on Twitter that have been throwing names about. Mike has been coming up with uh, with a ton of options in the comments, so I want to get to those too. I wanted to use this as kind of a base starting point if the Wilds are to make a move for a defenseman while also having, I think, the same stance that it would be preferred to just... See what Damon Hunt has in the tank the rest of the season to fulfill the greater good. So we'll see. And uh, we'll get to plenty more of these names because there have been some doozies thrown around today uh, that I think bear discussing as well. So that is today's episode. Again, best of luck to the uh, PWHL Minnesota. Best of luck to the ladies in their game tonight. We'll have some reaction for you coming up for tomorrow here on Locked on Wild. So make sure to uh, tune in. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to hit the like button so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week here at Locked on Wild. You can find new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked on Podcast Network.